Good morning, everybody. How are you? Today Good morning. Doing... I'm glad to hear you. Thanks, Barbara. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Sharon. Good morning, Sister Sharon. We love you. Hi, Kenny. How are you? <laughs> All right. Today is going to be Esther chapter two, and this is where she's made queen. Okay, Esther became the model for the Jews living in exile, if you don't already know that. So chapter two, verse one. After these things, when the wrath of King Azarus was appeased and he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what was decreed against her, then said the king's servant to him, let there be fair young virgins sought for the king and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shushan, the palace, to the house of the women, unto the custody of Hege, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women, and let their things for purification be given them. And let the maiden which pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti. And the thing pleased the king, and he did so. Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jer, the son of Shemai, the son of Kish, a Benjamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, which had been carried away with Jechomiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan the palace, to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. Verse 9, And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her things for purification, with such things as belonged to her and seven maidens, which were meet to be given her out of the king's house. And he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Now, when every maid's turn was come to go into King Azarius, after that, she had been 12 months according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purification <clears throat> accomplished. To wit, six months with oil of myrrh and six months with sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of the women. Then thus came every maiden unto the king. Whatsoever she desired was given her to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house. In the evening she went and on the morrow she returned into the second house of the women to the custody of Shaazagaz, the king's chamberlain which kept the concubines. She came in unto the king no more, except the king delighted in her and that she were called by name. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king, she required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women appointed, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. So Esther was taken unto King Azuruas into his house royal in the 10th month, which is the month of Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and his servants, even Esther's feast. And he made a release to the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king. Mordecai saves the king's life. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat in the king's gate. 
verse 20, Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people as Mordecai had charged her. Esther did the commandment of Mordecai, like as when she was brought up with him. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bigthan and Teresh, of those which kept the door were wroth and sought to lay hand on the king as a ruis. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree and it was written in the book of the chronicles before the king and i will turn it over now to charlie so that he can do the expounding and i hope everyone understands that esther was a very important part of everything in the bible that she actually uh was there to make sure that the Jews didn't get annihilated. I mean, unfortunately today, nowadays, you can see that they're trying to annihilate the Jews again, which is called genocide. So that being said, I will um, give the floor to Charlie and he will continue. Amen, thank you, sister. What a great job my wife did there today. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for this? You ready for this, guys? I didn't know that was coming. That's funny. Hold on. Let me Ernie, Pastor Charlie, you still recording now, aren't you? I know. Leave it alone, Ernie. I'm all right, sir. Don't bother me. I'm here. <laughs> One of the things my wife won't do, and, and you have to understand this, because we, we understand there's such sensitivity, and we don't want to offend people, but one of the things I allow is any reading from the commentaries, and that could be anybody here because it's a Bible study. My wife, incidentally, was reading out of her, and she used a couple of subtitles out of the second edition, Thomas Nelson. And, you know, I sat there and I was talking with her this morning. I didn't know she was doing what she was doing. She just kept, kept you know, because even last time in Ruth, she read in Ruth. And yes, I have, I have uh, Natalie here that that wants to read, but I also have other sisters that contacted me, and I got to be a fair team player. And and my biggest excitement is uh, Tasha is going to be reading during this uh, read of the book, and you know I'm just Deanne, and then I'm going to do something again with Natalie. And I haven't figured it all out yet, but God willing, I will. But today, let me put a light on here because my wife just did that out of nowhere. I don't, it doesn't bother me, people hear me rattling. This is our prayer group. It's a real prayer group. It's no different than sitting there and having 10 people in the church or eight people or two people giving a testimony. This is real. We do this every day sunday i start at 10 from the pulpit but i want to share commentary this morning the beauty contest to choose the real queen remember this this was a process after what uh natalie opened up sharon got to do chapter two i don't know who's going to do three yet i'm going to keep my mouth shut after these things when the wrath of king Ahasuerus was appeased. He remembered Vasti and what she had done. She was bad. She was wicked. And what was decreed against her. That was the opening thing. This verse, after these things, after what things? Well, the things that had taken place in the first chapter. The campaign to Greece were exorcies was soundly defeated. After his defeat, he returned in deep dejection to his palace. Now, Vashti could never be his queen after everything that went down. So we must turn to secular history for the campaign. And, you know, I look at all this in commentaries because it was an unfortunate defeat for the army and for 
exorcise, exorcise, but God was overruling. And the power was about to pass back in that time. You know, there's so many history books about all this stuff. When I start delving into commentaries, brothers and sisters, we had to understand that after his defeat and his loneliness, he uh, pays, uh, faces up or paces up, the commentary says, and down in the palace every day, he was thinking of Vas Vasti, but the law that uh, he had made concerning the queen cannot be changed. He had set aside the beautiful woman and he could never have her, her again. You know, and, it, and, and that always reminds me when we say we're gonna do things, are we really gonna do what we say we're gonna do? Members of the king's cabinet occupying positions noticed how moody and lonely the king became. And those are things, you know, Ernie and uh, Kenny, we all get hurt. We all suffer things. Even kings suffer things. Look what happened with Ahab and Jezebel. Ahab was like, a, what do we call the self-pity guy? And he allowed the woman to take over and and enforce his seal when she wasn't supposed to do that and and that's why i i really truly my wife and me believe that the women can do a lot of things in the body of christ but the simplicity of the word of god is that i do not permit a woman to teach or take authority over a man and we have to be very careful because when we do things contrary to the word of god it offends people period and I've been trying to run a prayer group without the interference of everybody getting mad at me. Just allow me to explain myself because God does use the women. My wife reads better than me. I, you guys don't get to hear her read, but she's the one that we got through three times through War on the Saints together. And, and I'm very encouraged by what uh, Sister Natalie shared with me because I learned something yesterday from that sister just in conversation. But, you know, this story is, is really amazing because it actually, the story begins with a Jew whose name was Mordecai today. He was of the tribe of, Gen of Benjamin. The question that immediately arises is, what is he doing here? He belonged to a royal family of Israel. He was from the family of Saul. I mean, when you, you get into studying and, and all the different stuff and books, the history of that period of time, and, and, you know, it, it fills up these commentaries. When I opened the commentary, I just said to my wife today, God's really using this woman in a very different way. And, you know, it's not the first time we're reading Esther. We've done the Bible. This is the fourth time MOS is going through the Bible. And the commentaries I have now are a little more of study commentaries than I ever had prior. You know, Matthew Henry, a lot of these commentaries are good, but when you get into people that have been really studying the, the word and the time periods, and they're digging up more and more uh, manuscripts, and when they came over years back and brought out the Dead Sea Scrolls and all that. It really intrigued me because when, even when we go back to everything we're le learning in the New Testament, God permitted. And here's what really, I love God so much because he, he, he permits us to make mistakes so that we don't make them over and over again. He shows us in the word of God, come on now, you can do better. And God permitted his people to return to their own land. He also prophesied through Isaiah, Cyrus had been given a decree to permit them to return. And those who were in the will of God did return to Palestine. And, you know, here we are. They wanted to annihilate the Jewish people thousands of years ago. What did they do in real time in Israel, Jerusalem, Gaza? We're watching the same evil spirits in operation today real time and you see how they're all coming together different nations different people even in america 
they're protesting in our socialist colleges to kill the Jews. But this ain't insanity, man. I, I never thought, you know, first of all, last time we read this, Israel wasn't at war. The Palestinians, and, and here we are in America because it's gone so far left in the last 40 years in our schools. I'm talking about everything that's going on in the United States of America is not a nation that's under God right now. And the only way it can change is the revival. And, and you know, apostasy is apostasy. That, that means that something's going wrong. And you know what? We got nobody to blame but ourselves. The church has got nobody to blame. They've got the book, and they're not walking the book. Instead of churches getting smaller and smaller, there should be revivals going on and the glory of God so there'd be a harvest. There's a huge harvest out here. But they're not preaching repentance. They're, they're preaching anything goes. And that's not the truth when you read the the Bible, because you want the truth. Read the Gospels. Listen to what Jesus spoke. That's where hyper grace came in. You know, we're saved by grace, but you don't keep sinning. God forbid. God cleans us up. That's why deliverance is a New Testament gift from God to the people of God. You know? When they were free to go, they did not want to return to the homeland. Many of them, out of the will of God, chose to remain, and Mordecai happened to be one of them. He should have been back in the land of Israel, but of all places, notice where he is. He's in the palace. He has a political job to do for the kingdom of God. I mean, I was reading this early this morning. I'm saying, man, this is good stuff, because we see where the problems are today all over the world. And it's just not here. It was in Ukraine, it's in China, it's in North Korea. Politics, the United States, the, the house is divided. They can't get nothing done, you know? And yet nobody's, nobody's quoting the word of God. Nobody's going to the one that's king of kings. Everybody's being silent, and God don't have a say-so in this country anymore. And I, when I was reading this this morning, and this man, Mordecai, is going to be brought home, although he's not out of the will of God, and although he's not looking to God for help, even at the time when you would think that they were his people, that they would turn to God. They did not. There's no mention of God or of prayer in this book in the book of Esther. And that, that's what amazes me about this book. You know, both Mordecai and Esther. Mordecai was an uncle to Esther. And it says here, Mordecai came. It says, come on the pages of scripture in a poor light, although they are very high-typed individuals, as we will see later on in the story. Remember, the Old Testament, what I learned from my mother-in-law when I was younger, people, was she used to love the stories. Now I know why. As I get older, and you know, I'm still younger than she was when she taught me this. And I read this stuff in commentary. Mordecai was taken into captivity, probably at a young age, in the second deportation of captives. See, we don't get this information in the scripture. But this is stuff that's all been written. And the first deportation that left Jerusalem was made up of the princes of the nobility, the upper class. And Daniel was with that group. We haven't even gotten to the book of Daniel yet. That's how, why Jesus said we got to study scripture to get a, a bigger understanding on God's plan. And what God can do for all of us in our lives, if we would only walk with him, talk to him, become doers of the word of God. And yeah, there's an Old Testament and New Testament. New Testament is the grace. We don't have to burn offerings anymore. We don't have to be so repetitious 
All we got to do is learn to love and trust our God and learn to love and trust our brothers and sisters. You know, it, it all sums up in everything God's been showing me, bearing each other's burdens. When my brothers here prayed for me a couple of months ago, there wasn't an outward manifestation. There was a spiritual manifestation. Glory to God. I spoke to everybody about that yesterday. We serve a God of miracles. And I'm not, I didn't put my hearing aids in. I, my wife said it to me last night. Something's going on inside of you and it's better. And then she blew me away today by walking in here with a head covering on and jumping in to the prayer room. That's only the second time she's ever read in the scriptures here with us because she read in uh, Ruth, as did some of the other sisters. Well, we can see how the providence of God works here. Why? Because Mordecai become interested. His position in the palace, no doubt, gave him the opportunity to see the different girls that were brought from all over the kingdom to enter into the contest. Remember, he was seeking a queen. They called the concubines in scripture, just like Solomon. I am sure he compared them with Esther and decided that none of them were as beautiful as his adopted daughter. Remember that Esther was in his daughter. I said it a few minutes ago. Esther in scripture, that was his, her uncle. Just like we take over in, in people's lives as spiritual fathers, spiritual mamas, uh, spiritual brothers and sisters, and we submit to one another, we listen to one another. A wise man heeds instruction. Same thing with a wise woman, you know? You can see the providence of God moving in this whole situation today. Mordecai took his young cousin, Esther, and entered her into the beauty contest. I love the way modern commentaries talk about stuff. And I don't hide nothing from anybody. You, you get wisdom from a multitude of counselors. You can listen to, there's so many of them, especially during the, the move of deliverance that shot out after the Welsh revival, the, uh, the different brothers and sisters, the Azusa Street. Then you go to 1970. I wasn't even born again, but man, there was a Jesus movement in the United States. I was a hitchhiker when I was young because that was the thing of the hippies. But I'm going to tell you something. I used to stick my thumb out. And, and if you had nice girls hitchhiking, you all got down to the beach. And, and people picked us up. I've hitchhiked all over the East Coast when I was young, going places, doing things. And I realized, you know, somebody stopped and picked me up today. Very few people stopped because of the the evil that's going on right now in our world. And, you know, I, I look at this, and when Esther was involved and Mordecai put her in there, the story isn't over. And 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 the commentary, the commentator was McGee in this book. It's difficult breaking the Mosaic law by entering this girl in a beauty contest on the chance that she might become the next queen. And, you know, that was the fall of many people, including David, Solomon. That was the ruination of his life, all the beautiful concubines. That's been the whole problem with Israel through our studies. And we can see God now taking command of a situation. Esther was brought to the king's house. And he guy, she pleased, it said in scripture. He was the keeper of the woman. So she got immediate favor. She pleased the man that the king put. Then there was favor being given. And somewhere in between, just like my friend Jane Dubin, who's a wonderful sister, but she's Jewish. I've been praying for her for a few years now. And here she is. I, I sent her Natalie's read to show her that women 
are involved in God's ministry. And sure enough, she's in a Christian church because her friend's the organist and a professional organ player. The music was beautiful in the video. So, you know, God's got great ways to do things for all of us. And what happened? She obtained kindness from Hegai. And he gave her everything she needed to help her. And that was all the, you know, when I was reading that part of the scripture about odors and about the stuff that the women were using in today's read, it made me realize that uh, anti-Semitism always had been a curse because of what's going on in Israel now, today. And it had been this nation. You cannot read the account of Nebuchadnezzar, the destruction of Jerusalem, without realizing his hatred for the Jewish people. Well, that's that's Iran today, people. Same spirits. That's why us being spiritual can get a great understanding of reading the Bible when we're doing it as a fellowship. You know, it's more important to know God than being drilled something over and over and over again. Sometimes you hear something over and over again. It's the same old story. We got all these books, 66 books. There's a different flavor from God. He said, if you would only search the scriptures, your faith would grow. You would know who he is. So yet the anti-Semitic feelings remain even to our day-to-day. -day. Mordecai being very sensitive to that warns Esther not to reveal her nationality because she was a Jew. Remember that. The silence is tantamount to the denial of her religion because religion is the thing that has identified these people down through all the years. The moment Mordecai and Esther denied their nationality, the moment they denied their religion, but remaining in the land of captivity they would be out of the will of God. It is an interest to note today where men and women are out of the will of God that have very little to say about their faith in Christ. Churches are loaded with them. That's where you get Christ in the book of Revelation saying to the churches, you're lukewarm. That's where Scripture tells us when God returns, is he going to find faith? Faith in who? Faith in him. You know? When you're in the will of God, you can rest in the fact that God is causing all these things to work together for our good. Or we couldn't quote, the good work he started in us, he will finish. I mean, there's so much here in this little book. What was it? 20, 23 verses today, I think. Mordecai is not resting in God because he's out of God's will. He is pacing, going up and down, nervously biting his fingernails. Because that's how we get sometimes. I get that way as much as I love God. My wife can tell you sometimes I get frustrated. But you know what? You know what helps me? Help me, Lord Jesus. I can't tell you how often I say that. And I'm honestly being truthful with you guys. I, I say that quite a few times a day. So I'm not holier than that, you know? He was absolutely frightened of what he had done. He was worried sick. He couldn't even sleep at night. This is Mordecai's condition. When you are out of God's will, you are not apt to rest on your own morals and say everything that will be right. I get a hoot out of reading good commentary sometimes. At this point, nor can he put anything into God's hands. I am not sure he knew anything about the providence of God. However, God overrules all this. When, when we don't understand, God's still giving us grace, people. Always hold on to that. Nothing is impossible with God. Sometimes I look up and I say, thank you for saving me. I'm not talking about my salvation. Out of my mental misery sometimes. I'm thanking God, and I walk around the house saying, thank you, Jesus. May And, and the commentary is good because he put it in common sense here. 
May I say unto you that if your wife takes a few hours in the beauty salon, my my wife for many years didn't go. She went to friends that would cut her hair. I got to tell you, she's got gray hair coming in with her natural color. She looks better to me now than she ever looked because she takes care of herself. I can understand why scripture said that today. You ought not to complain. These girls spend a whole year there. The first six months, they went to the, the spa for reducing and oil treatments. I never looked at it that way. And women have a different need than men. And, and, and when that scripture came on my eyes today, and then I read the commentary this morning, what I'm reading to you, I said, man, I shouldn't beat the ladies up at all anymore. And it said, the next six months, they went to what? The perfumers. And I I watch how my wife is. Even when I met my wife in the world, in the business world, man, I thought it was crazy. The money she spent getting her hair done, getting her whatever, the nails, the toenails and all that. But that's, that's something that God instilled in women right back here in the Old Testament. You can see the tremendous things here. I suppose that even the swam in the cologne in that day in order to be prepared to go in the presence of the king. Remember, everybody had to bow to the king. Someday we're all going to bow to King Jesus, you know? And that's how these kings were in the Old Testament. Everybody was subject. We're subject to the word of God, people. As much as we want to disagree with God, we are still subject to the king of kings. And he's got the last say so. And that's why reverence to God, fear and trembling. When you fear God, you want to please God. And I'm sure all these women that were trying to become the next queen so to speak because the other queen was bad okay that's all i could say about it but these girls they went through an entire year of beauty conditioning in this little context that you know i look at things so differently reading commentary sometimes than just hearing somebody read the word of god in esther's case you know some women would be greatly improved and some only need a little makeup. I think we should all do our best with what God has given us. You should take that personally. And I want to add, I felt saying something like a little makeup lady would improve a great deal. And I heard, I, I, I'm being funny here, but I heard Pastor Worley make a comment years ago when I was watching the video and sitting there. And, you know, I was a little negative toward it, but now I'm positive toward it after reading a commentary because maybe Wynne wrote, read this same commentary at one time because these preachers were all in that same, you know, latitude of time, like the Raven Hills, the McGee's, and there, there's so many, so many, you know, Charles Spurgeon. When you go back in generations, because I got Wesley's, uh, journals here at the house. I always read stuff as I'm older because it's a good way of learning what the other generations were about. But you know what? With God, in Esther's case, God permitted Esther by her providence, her interest, uh, her entrance into doing what was acceptable by the man in charge of it all were all ordered by God. And we got to remember that. God is in charge of everything. So when you're, you're, you're in the dumps, don't worry. God can get us out of the dumps. I've seen him happen that. And that's why God says in the word of God, don't worry. When it was Esther's turn to go to the king, it was decided that she was a natural beauty. It would have been like uh, giddling a lily to send her in the beauty parlor. She was already beautiful, lovely. Everyone who saw her, thought she was a winner. She stood out amongst everyone else. That's the hand of God moving, isn't it? Yes. 
He's moving by his providence. He's going to put her on the throne next to the king. God would be violating his word, and God never does. So when and she was following her faith. And that's why those guys got killed in the end. Because she's the one that told the king they were talking against them. And look what happened at the very end. They got hanged. So now you know what happened in the old days. They hanged people, you know. And that was a continued thing, even in a in America right now until they came up with a quicker way, the electric chair. So I, I just sit there and I realize something in this read today that I never looked the the women that were uh, being selected to be the next queen spent a year of preparation that everything about that woman would be pleasing to the king. And Somewhere along the line, you know, soon it would be Esther's turn to go to the king. And she was taking a chance. If she did not win, she would become one of the concubines of the king of Persia. Because that's what happened with Solomon. And you got to understand all this. When it was Esther's turn to go to the king, it was decided she was beautiful. And I guess... Everything about her drew the king's attention to her. And then when he, she told them, you know, at the end there, she said, the king might have said something, but we just had a judge there at the East Cape in this uh, reading. And that happened when the virgins were gathered together the second time. Then Mordecai sat at the king's gate. So it was her uncle, you know. Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai. She was listening to her family member who actually raised her for a time. And in and, and coming down to the end of the commentary, the girl is a remarkable person, even married to the king, and she still has instruction from the man who reared her and i i'm grateful to god that our youngest daughter i got to rear her you know and i get to rear my grandchildren and i get to rear my son's daughter and my son's son and they both believe in jesus and I was part of that. My wife was part of that. And, and I really believe, as the commentary ends today, I believe Mordecai is one of the outstanding men in Scripture to whom I've paid. He wasn't as important. A couple of chapters back, he was mentioned. Now he apparently was a man of remarkable ability. You know, when I, when I read this in commentary there's things that the commentary says that we don't catch sometimes and it was interesting at the end here it's like a familiar picture it's like a, a bunch of hiding the grace and the mercy that comes plotting against the king because that's what happened at the end of this chapter Mordecai knew that his position gained him a vantage point but he was not able to overhear the plot. But after Mordecai told Esther about the plan that they were going to kill the king, Esther told her husband. So you got to learn something here. The two become one. Very tight, brothers and sisters. And you better, better watch your lips sometimes. Because when you say things to someone that's married, there's a good chance that that married person is going to get a spouse's either way opinion because the two became one spiritually by God. And that's what I got out of this when I was reading the commentary early this morning because us people that are married, 
it's not always about what some people get married for. It's because the two become one. And if the two become one, they have to agree and they have to be best friends. And even in the spiritual, they got to be on the same page. He had discovered a plot against your life. That's what went down here. The FBI investigated and found it to be true. These fellows were arrested. They didn't have a long time. No, they didn't have the FBI back then. But God revealed what was hidden through Esther to her husband, the king. The king ordered them to be put to death because he was the king. And they were executed by hanging. This was to discourage others who might attempt to plot against the king. Of course, they were very uncivilized in that day, but they did not go for the lawlessness and pampering of criminals. That is the opposite today. When I read the ending here on the commentary, which I spent more time than my wife spent reading the scriptures, brothers and sisters, this entire incident was written down in the Chronicles of the King in the minutes, if you please, of the Kingdom of Persia. It is interesting to see that something was omitted here. Mordecai was not rewarded or recognized at all for his service. So we don't have to be rewarded. Our rewards are going to be in heaven, people. And I love that song, Count Your Blessings, One by One. I suppose he brooded over it many times, wondering why in the world had he been ignored. He wasn't even given a Boy Scout badge or a lifesaver button for saving the king's life. Certainly he deserved something. Why was this incident passed by? Why? God is overruling by his providence, because God, in reality, is controlling the whole situation. And when you learn who God is, you can thank God every day of your life that God is with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. I pray that this message, uh, well read by our sisters, the first two chapters, I give God the glory and and don't count God out when everything is impossible for us, because with God, all things are possible, brothers and sisters. And I mean that in my heart this morning. And I thank you for being here and listening. I lost people. I guess I went a little too long with the commentary. But the good part is, I saw there were a couple of people lately I haven't been here. And as a, a brother, I got to make sure they're okay. So. God bless you all. Thanks for listening. Now, why? Come on. There we go. Thank you, Jesus. So we can record this closing song in with today's teaching, Lord. So important sometimes, you know, to worship God. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a strength for each new day he will make a way he will make a
Amen. You still recording? Yep. I got to get out of it. I'm not there. <laughs>